Our next three guests on Live at Five are members of a famous musical family, worlds apart from the Osmonds or the Lennon sisters. Frank Zappa is one of the most respected and certainly influential and at times controversial modern composers and musicians. His legacy encompasses nearly four dozen albums, several movies, and numerous concert performances. He has gained commercial success and controversy with hits like Jewish Princess and Dance and Fool. Last year, his daughter, Moon Unit, scored a huge hit with a tune called Valley Girl, which epitomizes the angst of San Fernando Valley, California teenagers and quickly became a national craze. Most recently, Mr. Sapa's son, Dweezil, released his own single, and that's called My Mother is a Space Cadet. And we're delighted to welcome Frank, Moon Unit, and Dweezil, the Zappa family, or a part of them, to Live at Five. Nice to have you all here. Nice to be here. Uh, Moon Unit and Dweezil are unusual names for, for offspring. Uh, did you pick these, Frank? I mean, Frank's yeah. a fairly ordinary name. Yeah, I, I didn't have as good luck as they had. You know? <laughs> what, do they mean anything in particular? Is there a, a hidden significance to... No. No? No. Just nice names. Nice names? Just nice names. Just nice names. Have you um, encountered any difficulty in um, school or places like that with names like Weasel and Moon Unit? Uh, <laughs> not really, no. <laughs> in uh, like elementary school we got hassled, but you, you get tough mm -hmm. and you... People think my name is German for some odd reason. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that would make sense, right? Of course, if you get a, a huge hit record, then any, any of that kind of conversation immediately goes by right. the board. <laughs> my mother is a space cadet. Is this about... Your mother? Nah. It's just, a, just one line, but uh, <laughs> that's about when she's reading a magazine, you can't talk to her because she's just in, in a daze, <laughs> and that's the line. But um, other than that, it's about uh, my friend's mom. So. It's kind of about moms in general when they want to maybe tune out, right? Yes. They want to listen. You've got a thing coming up in January that I would assume at least to a degree represents the realization of a dream. You're going to Paris and you're going to premiere a, a, a piece for an ensemble orchestra that you have, have written. And uh, I think you told Playboy magazine at some point a couple of years ago that if you ever wrote and had recorded classical music, it would be bought by rock and roll fans in this country. Probably, yeah. Hmm? That seems to be what's happened with the first album that we did with that kind of music, because I made an album last January with the London uh, Symphony Orchestra. Hmm. And most of the people who have bought that have been rock and roll consumers. How so? Thing in, well, it, because the, most of the people in the classical uh, consumer category don't listen to that kind of stuff. I don't care who buys it. Doesn't make any difference to me. <laughs> no, I understand that. But I, I just wondered uh, what would what would motivate a, a, a rock fan to buy orchestra to music? buy something done by an ensemble orchestra in in a European recording session. Why would they want to do that? Boy, you got me. That's really a tough one. <laughs> but, uh, but you said that would happen, Frank. Come on. <laughs> well, it happened already with the one we did with the London the Symphony London Orchestra. Symphony. The thing that we're doing in January is conducted by Pierre Belez. And so since he's conducting it, that's probably going to reach more into the classical consumer market because his name means something to them, whereas my name wouldn't. Okay. Moon, the valley girl thing. Yes. Dad comes in the middle of the night. You had been mumbling this gibberish around the house. Uh, kids that you knew in school and woke you up in the middle of the night and said, uh, "Let's let's put this on tape." It was kind of a fluke thing, wasn't it? The way it happened. Yes, um, I had actually written my father a letter. It was uh, real personal to whom it may concern. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> I see. Uh, I, I had wanted to participate in some way, you know, with uh, his uh, album and. Um, so I just went in the studio and just kept talking, and uh, the rest is history. <laughs> and they laid that down, and you did some rhythm in the background, and suddenly it started to get a little airplay on the radio stations out yeah. there. And Accidents uh, will happen. Yes, <laughs> and took off and became a mega hit. What do, you do, what do you do for an encore? Uh, well, for me, that was uh, uh, just one character that I do because I'm really interested in, in films and, um, I don't know, maybe Broadway. Um, but. Uh, I'm looking for, you know, something along the lines of comedy, and that was a comedic character that I do. I watch cartoons and pick up voices, and uh, you know, Dweezil and I both do that on Crunchy Water, which is the flip side to my mother's voice. Yeah. That we have cartoon voices that we did, and um, so that was just a character, and a lot of people didn't get that. Out of a lot of people think that's a real voice yeah. when they heard it, because she gets letters saying, oh, you're, you're the greatest Val in the world. I wish I could. <laughs> and the whole thing was done 
kind of tongue-in-cheek of, of put on of yeah. sorts, right? I, I alluded to it in the introduction that you variously over the last 15 or 20 years have been described as a, a genius, a, an innovator. Uh, on the other hand, uh, some not so complimentary things have been said about you by um, critics and, and whatnot. I'm interested in, in how you maybe like to be remembered when somebody writes a definitive history of the era of contemporary music from the late 50s through the 80s. I, I don't think it's important that anybody be remembered. It's important that you get a chance to do what you do while you're alive and, you know, provide entertainment for the people in your own time rather than uh, be remembered. People who plan for history are really fooling themselves. But you will be, because people, we do that and collectively. It's a we bad write habit. things down about it each other and we put it in books and put it on shelves and... Yeah. What do you think they might write about you? You write whatever they want. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a waste of time. <laughs> So you uh, do strictly what you do for you first? First of all, I do it for my own amusement, and if anybody else is amused by it, great, that's a bonus. Mm -hmm. is, your, uh, is your dad like, like the dads of, of the friends that you go to school with? <laughs> no way. <laughs> <laughs> How's he different? He's smart. <laughs> ah, that's a supreme compliment. Hmm? Well, I thank you for being with us. You're well, off to you. Paris. You're working on uh, a follow to Valley Girl. You've got a, a single record out. This is a talented family. There are a couple other younger ones at home, too. Right? Yeah, they're home. Yeah. Yeah. They'll, be, they'll be heard from at some point in the future. Oh, yeah, we're prepping them up right now. <laughs> home in that rehearsal hall, just working it out. Frank Zappa and Moon Unit and Dweezil, the Zappa family. Thanks for being with thank us. Thank you. See you again. Sure. All right, Jack. Chevy Chase is still ahead today on Live at Five. And up next, Liz will be here. She has some news about Barbara Streisand and, of course, many others. And we'll be right back.